You're listening to the October 5th, 2024 reading of Blossom Goodchild's Channeling with the Federation of Light. Hello there. I had an appointment earlier and planned to come back and do this channeling. When going into the appointment, I noticed a young girl sitting on a bench near the bus station, just staring into space. A few bags around her. And when I came out an hour later, she was still there. I walked past, yet my heart needed to go back and check in with her. Such a beautiful soul who had been homeless for about a year. We hugged and I simply couldn't let her go. I wonder when either of us had last had such a long, long loving hug. So we kept on hugging. The only words I spoke were, From this moment on, let it be that your life changes for the better. I handed her some money and left. I cried all the way home. Surely I could have picked up her bags and brought her home. I could have offered her a shower and do some washing. I could have given her a bed for the night. I could have given her so much more than money. Yet I chose not to, making excuses because it would have been inconvenient. My heart is so torn. I feel so selfish. Yes, I gave her all the love I had. Yet I could have done more. How could I welcome her in and then spit her out onto the streets again? Please offer some advice. She's haunting me. This is not the initial vibe I had in mind for today's channeling, yet here we are. Thank you. Dearest Blossom, and all souls here in this moment of connection, we shall speak to you of knowing. Knowing that the offering of kindness changed her heart. It changed her energy. Her heart was warmed by your love to a complete stranger. A change of heart took place within her, and indeed, from now on, as you asked it to be, her circumstances shall change. That would be so wonderful. Yet I'm battling with my giving, only going as far as it suited me. It would have been too inconvenient for her to stay with me. I feel I've let the side down. Blossom, know that the act of kindness and the loving hug was exactly what she needed to go on her journey. You have set the wheels in motion. You flipped the coin, so to speak. You could have just walked on by, yet you did so much more. You have to trust that if it was meant to be for her to come to your home, she would be with you now. Yet the universe has a different journey in store for her. I have to trust that all my thoughts of asking White Cloud to change things for her will come about. Is this not that which we have been speaking of, Blossom? To know the power within and the miracles it can produce? To know that the love you exchanged was creating a miracle for her life to change. And that is why you needed to hold each other for that length of time. In order for the transformation to take hold. I'm choosing to take your words as truth and not just trying to make me feel better. Thank you. I wonder if I'll see her again. It matters not. The timely meeting took place as arranged. Funny, though. Through my tears when I got home, I was trying to make myself feel better in that perhaps I was an angel to her just for that brief encounter. And then realized that, in fact, she was the angel for me. The love she gave back to me was so truthful, and that is why no words were needed. I know not her name, yet I encountered the most profound exchange today for which I am deeply grateful. I'll leave this there, yet thank you. I needed to voice this to release it before moving on to the question I had planned to ask. Somebody wrote in to ask this. I thought it may help many. 
As someone who's been into this for decades, the hope, sometimes the knowing, that huge and ultimately positive changes are on the near horizon has given me strength and joy many times, but also many disappointments and bouts of doubts and depression. At other times, I just released my expectations and was able to live in the now moment as joyfully and lovingly as possible. And I felt well. But this state is difficult to maintain through the highs and lows of life. How would you suggest we navigate this dilemma? Is it counterproductive to hope for something to happen soon? While it can give strength, it can also lead to a lower low. But living without expectation can be either empowering and blissful, but at times a bit depressing as well. Okay. Over to you guys. Thank you. We are grateful for this question being asked. Those of you upon this planet at this time are experiencing so much confusion, disappointment, and disbelief at that which is being revealed and presented. There is nothing wrong with hoping for a better world to live in. There is, however, an easier way to navigate this dilemma. By knowing that there is a better world coming, and it is being created by you. That which we speak of, and many others, we agree, can leave one feeling out of sorts as to how and when, and indeed why. Yet, at the same time, we feel it necessary to speak of the matters that we have, to prepare you for the possibilities that lie ahead. One's greatest desire, we assume, is to be happy. Who could ask for anything more? If one is happy, not one other requirement is needed. Happiness lies within. It comes from within. It is within. Therefore, we suggest one chooses to focus on finding and being that happiness. Easier said than done on a full-time basis, as the lady mentioned. Yet this does not stop you from working on it. We hear you saying, should it have to be worked on? Should it not be our natural state? Yes, indeed, it is innately your natural state of being. For when only loving thoughts about all and everything consume your breathing, there you shall find happiness. Hmm. Trouble is, when that blue bird of happiness sits on your shoulder for too long, inevitably it seems to poop on you. Do you not have a saying that this brings good luck? Yes, yet I've no idea why. Do you? We do not. Yet, whoever came up with that knowing was indeed a positive soul. To master positive wellness, to sit in your highest positive vibration at all times, does not come easily due to programming and presentation all around that is designed to make you feel otherwise. As we have pointed out, your power can rise above all of that. Your diligent attitude towards making this so is the key to bringing this continued high vibe about. Not easy, though. Amongst the opposition and their continued energy that is being sent out to bring us down. Move through it. If you know this is so, move through it. It is an energy. Everything is an energy. Change your feeling. Use the tools you have been given. I'm sure you know how powerful the mantra is. People use it all the time. It's wonderful to hear how much it's spreading and helping folk. So a general thank you from us all for this. Because of the power within it. The coding which is attached to your etheric spiritual heart. It ignites it with love and strength. It is your fuel, if we would put it that way. So to continue with the suggestion of the question. Perhaps... Think not of what you think is to take place yet. Feel how you wish your life to be. 
feel the happiness that you wish to wake up to every day. Again, easier said than done. Sometimes easy, sometimes I'm just not up for it. Then allow yourself to feel that when necessary. You know you will come back up. That is all that is required from, of you, by you. Do the best you can in any given moment is all that you need to ask of yourself. Less of the beating up for not being a living, breathing, obvious angel. And more of the knowing that the truth of who you are is a living, breathing, not so obvious angel. In this we mean that it is not necessary to be so obvious. You just are. Were you not an angel this morning in your encounter, Blossom? Was not the young girl an angel? Was this not obvious? Yet in such a discreet way that only love itself can know the exchange between the two that took place. Love. 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 The wonders that love in, of, as, through itself can reach out and touch go far beyond that which one assumes it to. You, each one, are the lovers of, for, this world. That which you are told in these times can be very depressing. Yet know that all we have said is from our truth. It is the timing of it that brings about disappointment. Let go of time frames. Wake up each morning knowing you, as you, the souls residing on earth in these most important times, are going to make the very best of this life you have been given. No, you are fulfilling the task that you came to complete. Know that by bringing joy to others, and indeed yourself, is the greatest, most powerful tool you have to rid the darkness from this beautiful Mother Gaia and restore peace once again. Know you came to do this. Know you are doing it. Know it is done. Just you wait and see, dearest souls. Just you wait and see. Well, we've waited this long. I guess we can wait for as long as it takes. We just will. What choice do we have? Your choices of attitude are what assists most. You know how to maneuver through the trials. The longer it takes, the more you master these skills. You have got this. You are warriors of the greatest light. That light never stops shining and being that which it is. You. Thanks so much. I'm feeling much stronger and brighter than when I began. I am the light. I am the love. I am the truth. I am. In gratitude, in loving service, I am. Marco, I see you on the screen. Is it Marco, Marco on the screen? Marco. Oh, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Marco um, is becoming famous I, here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm, I was ha happy to hear your voice. I was also making coffee while you were making coffee. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> All right, there happens to be a certain someone who uh, we're all here to see who joined us at the top of the hour. Blossom, welcome. Is that better? Much better. Hey there. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are we all? Hello. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. Okay. Morning, Joe. <laughs> 